with so many people in the world and uh, in the cities that we all have to become aware of what we can do as individuals to cut down on air pollution because we're, uh, we're being strangled with it. it. It's really dense. You can't smell much of the, of the natural air. You can't really breathe it. It's hard to breathe when you... It's really dark, low. Sometimes um, it's, it's just unbearable. Well, when I'm riding in my dad's car and a diesel truck passes by, my dad has to close the windows because I start coughing. I don't like it. This is probably one of the major locations of industrial and car pollution. Just looking at the freeways and the, and the roads and rush hour, you can tell that there's an awful lot of uh, pollution coming out of automobiles. Many of us have accepted the dingy haze that surrounds Houston's horizon as a byproduct of big city life. However, this mixture of ozone, carbon monoxide, smoke, lead, and other contaminants can have detrimental long-term effects on our health. Air pollution causes coughing, sneezing, watery eyes, and a reduced immune system in healthy individuals. But in sensitive people, such as children and the elderly, and all those who suffer from respiratory illnesses, such as asthma or allergies, pollution can cause discomfort, limited activity, even a shortened life. The younger people uh, do not realize or do not think that it will ever happen to them, but it is a, a process that uh, you become aware of as you get older and uh, it doesn't mean that that was not taking place at that time, but it just takes a longer period to catch up with the end results. I uh, regret that others are not aware of this. I hope that others are not made aware of it in the same manner I was made aware of. I don't like my disease. Each of us can help clean up the air in the Houston region by reducing the number of vehicles on the road between 6 and 10 a.m., when most reactive pollutants are dispelled into the air. Under the Federal Clean Air Act, employers with over 100 employees must take steps to increase average passenger occupancy, or APO. The APO for one person per car is rated as 1.00. As an employer, the city of Houston has 47 sites with over 100 employees. The APO figures at these sites average 1.17 people per vehicle for the city. In order to comply with the Clean Air Act's employer trip reduction regulations, we must increase this APO to 1.47 by September 1996. The city of Houston's employee commute options program was created to bring the city into compliance by providing city employees guidance in the use of alternative forms of travel to the single occupant commute. All options from carpooling to telecommuting are being explored with the following considerations. Least disruptive, most employee support, most effective, and least expensive. The federal government has established standards for all of the health-based contaminants. We also have to be aware that under the current law, the current version of the Federal Clean Air Act, if we don't attain the standard, the Houston area stands to lose federal funding and also stands to be subject to sanctions which would restrict the growth in the area. Consequently, we all have an economic interest in, in trying to make uh, the Houston air a little bit cleaner and to add, hopefully, years of life to individuals who suffer from air pollution as we have it today. Under the Clean Air Act, 
air quality standards must improve in the entire Houston region, which includes eight counties. How serious is air pollution in the Houston region? Houston is ranked second only to Los Angeles for ozone smog levels. Of the six air quality standards set by the EPA, Houston meets five of these standards. In the Houston area, we're primarily concerned about ozone. We have uh, ozone problems here in that we exceed the national standard for ozone, and we exceed it more than three days in a year, which uh, qualifies us for a special uh, control measures which are intended to reduce the ozone. Air in the Houston region exceeded EPA standards for ozone smog 38 days in 1993. Ozone smog is different from the ozone high in the Earth's atmosphere. That is beneficial ozone because that ozone protects the Earth's surface from the ultraviolet rays and that's good. So when we lose ozone in that area, then that's a concern. But the ozone that we're concerned with, the ozone at ground level that affects people because they breathe that ozone is problematic, and that's the ozone we want to live with. Ozone, the way we understand it, is, is, the for, is a chemical that forms in the atmosphere as a result of volatile organics and some other chemicals that mix in the presence of sunlight. Where do these pollutants come from? The Houston region has a high concentration of refineries and industrial facilities that produce air contaminants. Other sources include gas stations, small businesses, lawnmowers and blowers, boats, trains, and planes. And in addition to that, we operate an awful lot of motor vehicles. Each individual operating motor vehicle contributes somewhat to air contamination. Too. What are the effects of poor air quality on our health? People who have asthma, such as I am, we, it, it can it affect our sinuses or our asthma in some way, but um, like for me, it can affect my sinuses and in turn, my sinuses affect my asthma. And then I can go, then I can go to the hospital for a period of over 24 hours or so. Well, it limits my activity and uh, I get short of breath, so I can't, I can't do things for as long a period of time, or maybe something that, some activities I can't do at all. It prevents me from doing other, other things that other kids do, um, especially like just the asthma part, like the air pollution, but air pollution even makes it worse, and, and it gets harder. I, I feel a need of breath in my lungs, and sometimes I uh, hyperventilate because I'm trying to get more oxygen out of the air, and, and you just unconsciously go into this mode. You have to learn to control it by breathing exercises. If uh, the pollution is uh, high for the humidity and whatever affects my breathing, I plan, uh, alter my plans because I know that it's not a good day for me and it makes me feel bad and that I perhaps will not be able to uh, complete the things that I had planned so I stay in. I try to eliminate walking on a major street. For instance, I live near uh, Beechnut and Hillcroft, two major streets there. And I, I stay off those streets altogether because of the pollution from the automobiles passing by. It just makes it too difficult to breathe. Many people in the region suffer the ill effects of contaminated air. Industry, small businesses, and government have proposed some strategies that make reductions and avoid high air pollution levels. Yet there are so many things that we all do normally which could reduce air pollution. The most notable thing we do is, is drive cars, and we drive an awful lot here in Houston. Uh, our average vehicle occupancy would suggest that we're almost one person per car, uh, which is a, a, a major contributor, and that goes on day in, day out, and, and, and that's the one thing that virtually everybody does. Don't drive alone. Use alternative forms of transportation such as carpools or van pools. Take care of your car. 
In January of 1995, the inspection and maintenance program will prohibit poorly maintained vehicles from driving on streets and highways. Become an educated consumer. Leave your car at home and share the ride. Take the bus, bike, or walk to work. Use vapor recovery nozzles when buying gas. Telecommute by working at home. Use electric blowers and mowers. And drive 55 miles per hour on the highways. What can you do to reduce your exposure to air pollution? Watch the calendar. Ozone smog tends to be worse during warm weather from May through October. Watch the clock. Since sunlight and time are necessary to form ozone, the highest levels of ozone can be found in the afternoon. Watch the news. Pollution levels are often given with weather reports and can be found in the weather section of the newspaper. Don't drive alone. By using alternative forms of travel to work, school, or shopping, you will avoid discharging more pollution into the air. If we look at our problem and we recognize that, that everybody enjoys a fairly comfortable standard of living in this country, we have to know that, that we can all afford to give up a little bit of our comfort if it's going to make a difference in terms of air quality. If you would like to learn more about air pollution, contact the Bureau of Air Quality Control at 640-4200. Industry, business, and government have proposed some strategies for reducing air pollution, yet many remain to be determined. If you would like to participate in planning these strategies, call the Houston-Galveston Area Council at 627-3200. The City of Houston, through the Employee Commute Options Program, offers assistance to all city employees looking for commute options to driving alone. For assistance, call the ECO helpline at 658-4500. And for more information about the Employer Trip Reduction Program and the Inspection and Maintenance Program, call the Texas National Resource Conservation Commission at one 800 453 smog. This is our number one goal, I would say, is, is to make the world a better place for us to live in and breathe and react normally. Maybe we can invent a car that you don't have to use, you don't have to use, use gas. You can just drive on without using gas. Sometimes you can be like going down and you're just having a drive around, and then you have see this like big truck in front of you with this big car or something, and it lets off all this exhaust everywhere, and then you start to feel sort of um, nauseous, and you get dizzy, and your eyes start to water, and you sometimes you feel a little um, tight in your chest. We'll just have to find different ways of doing things and eliminating people's activities so that they're not putting so much, so much chemical into the air and harming other people.